It's Halloween, time for treats and tricks. But some tricks go too far, so gather around the fire for these terrifying tales of the times that Halloween pranks went horribly wrong. The Halloween decorating wars get more and more exciting every year, and one North Carolina family had just the trick. They would freak out the trick-or-treaters with a highly realistic dummy that they would hang from the roof. It would look like a man had slipped while cleaning their gutters and was hanging onto the roof for dear life. They even dressed the dummy up in jeans, a sweater, and shoes. It was the most realistic Halloween decoration around, and they knew it would fool everyone. And it did including a neighbor. A person out walking their dog saw the hanging dummy, immediately freaked out and assumed it was a real person, and the next thing the Halloween-loving family knew, a fire department squadron had shown up on their front lawn, yelling at the dummy to hold on because help was here. No doubt the family had some explaining to do about their morbid taste in decorations, but at least no one was hurt in these Halloween decoration wars. And this next morbid decorator took things even further. Lawn mowers are dangerous things. Those whirring blades can cut through a person in a hurry if they're not careful. So one family decided to take advantage of that, taking the ride-on lawn mower and putting a dummy underneath it. But they had a particularly gruesome sense of humor, so they even covered the arms and legs in fake blood. Sure enough, everyone who saw it was disgusted and concerned, and one person was concerned enough to dial 911. The police arrived quickly and the dummy was realistic enough that someone even attempted to perform CPR on it before realizing it was a fake. So this prank turned out to be pretty messy and the police got angry. But if there was a prize for morbidly realistic Halloween decorations, this family was no doubt winning the grand prize, even if that grand prize might have been a ticket for wasting police resources. Sometimes it's not the decorations, it's the costume. Lansing, Michigan isn't the most dangerous city in the world, but the city has had its fair share of crime, which might have been on one unfortunate man's mind when he decided to dress up as an armed robber for Halloween. And he went for realism. Not only did he put on a ski mask and a bulletproof vest, but even took a fake M16 assault rifle with him to the party. Everyone there thought his costume was great. He was the life of the party. But after a while, he had to head home. But he got peckish, and he made a very bad decision. He wandered into the local Starbucks, a little tipsy and looking uh, for a snack or a latte, and forgot he was still dressed as a very realistic armed robber. The customers screamed and scattered, the cashier quickly hit the store alarm, and the store was soon swarming with police. This accidental robber was a very lucky man as the police were cautious enough not to open fire immediately. They examined his costume, confiscated his gear, and sent him home after likely giving him a lecture about proper Halloween attire. If there was an award for worst parent of Halloween, it probably goes to this guy. One father was a big fan of Halloween and he decided to enlist his wife in a prank to die for. Assuming his kids were big horror fans, he donned a mask of the serial killer Michael Myers and let his kids watch as the masked madman apparently ambushed their mother and strangled her to death. Naturally, the kids didn't take too well to seeing their mother being murdered and they ran screaming out of the house to get help. Oh, did we mention the kids were 6 and 8 years old? The kids ran to a neighbor and told him their mother was being murdered, and the neighbor naturally called the police. When the police arrived, they found two confused parents who had probably been high-fiving over their great joke a few minutes ago. While it's not a crime to scare your kids or pretend to strangle your wife, the two parents are likely paying for their bad sense of humor with years and years of therapy bills. And it's not just the parents who have a bad sense of Halloween timing. A teacher at a Massachusetts high school knew his kids were big fans of Halloween, and he wanted to get them in the spirit. Maybe he wanted to be seen as cool, or maybe he just had a dark sense of humor. But something possessed him to put on a ski mask and charge into a class of 15-year-olds while holding a chainsaw like the serial killer Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This was similar to a famous scene in the comedy Summer School. Did we mention the chainsaw was real? This teacher somehow thought it was a good idea to bring a deadly weapon into school and rev it up to full throttle in the middle of the classroom. This caused a panic as students tried to run out of the room, with one student even tripping over a desk and breaking his leg. The teacher found himself in very hot water. The students filed lawsuits against the school, and the family of the injured student wound up getting a $100,000 settlement, more than the original cost of filming the movie that inspired the prank. And sometimes you don't even need to scare people to get sued. One man decided to go for comedy rather than scares on Halloween, filling his yard with novelty tombstones in the spirit of Disney's Haunted Mansion. Except he decided to get a little too personal with his displays. He put up a sign pointing to an insane asylum directed at the home of the woman who lived next door and erected a fake tombstone for her that made fun of her for being unmarried and looking older than her age. 
Maybe he should have made fun of her for being humorless because she wasn't taking this lying down. The next time he heard from her, she was filing a lawsuit against him for harassment, and he became one of the first people hauled into court to defend his Halloween decorations. Even crazier, he ultimately lost the case, agreeing to take down the decorations and never make any references to her directly in his Halloween festivities again. At least he didn't refer to her as the Grinch who stole Halloween. Pranks are an essential part of Halloween, but this boy took it too far. Which neighborhood hasn't seen an egged house or two on mischief night? But it's all about the target. You definitely don't want to target the house of the guy with five dogs or the police chief's house. And you definitely don't want to target expensive infrastructure like one teenager did in Pennsylvania. Instead of going after a school bully or an old teacher he didn't like, he decided to egg a local electric company substation with predictable results. It was raining, and the nasty mix of egg sludge and water leaked into the circuitry. This caused a massive electric surge and explosion that not only caused serious damage but knocked out power to almost 8,000 people. It also knocked the boy off his feet and put him in the hospital with minor hearing damage. He recovered, but his ears were probably ringing again once his parents and the police were done with him. And not even trick-or-treating is safe. This one we have to go back to 1959 for maybe the most damaging Halloween prank of all time. Trick-or-treating was in full swing at the time, as Halloween started becoming a massive part of American culture, and one dentist was sick of it. Maybe Dr. William Shine was just a grump and was tired of being interrupted by a ringing doorbell. Maybe he didn't like that candy and sugar were a big part of the holiday, although it was probably a big moneymaker for those who practiced dentistry. All those new cavities. But whatever the cause, something possessed the California dentist to offer a special treat of candy-coated laxatives, and he managed to distribute 450 of them to kids in his neighborhood. The result? 30 local kids became violently ill, although none were admitted to the hospital and the odds are they just spent the evening in the bathroom. Not a great Halloween experience, but the outraged public tracked the diuretic treats back to the Halloween-hating dentist, and he wound up on trial for unlawful dispensing of drugs. It was a minor criminal affair with long-reaching consequences because it kicked off decades of paranoia about Halloween candy. Even today, there seem to be rumors every year of poisoned Halloween candy, and that's led to countless kids having their own treats thrown out by terrified parents. Truly a tragedy. Maybe it's better just to go to a nice safe haunted house. It's one of the most popular activities every Halloween. A bunch of scare actors dress up and scream a lot, and easily scared locals wander through a darkened barn as they get startled repeatedly. Some haunts are low-budget affairs, while others are spectacular mazes full of scares. But they're all for fun. Except for one haunted house in Ohio, in 2021 a haunted house actor at a fairground wanted to jazz up the attraction, named Seven Floors of Hell, so he decided to bring a real knife to work and menace guests with it. What could go wrong? Sure enough, one guest got a very unpleasant surprise. An 11-year-old boy was wandering through the attraction when the worker stabbed his knife repeatedly on the ground to startle the kid and then wound up cutting the boy's foot. Needless to say, this brought an end to the haunt for everyone involved as the boy was treated at the first aid center. The worker was fired, but apparently the boy wasn't scared easily. He not only refused further medical attention but went back into the attraction and completed it. Unfortunately, these next guests didn't have the same Halloween spirit. The Hollywood Wax Museum in Myrtle Beach is filled with creepy attractions, but none scarier than their zombie experience, Outbreak, Dread the Undead. A bunch of scare actors dressed as zombies terrorize everyone who enters, but one guest terrorized them right back. Kale Luttrell Brown was scared by an actor, fell on the ground and saw a gun next to him, so he did the only sensible thing, picked up the gun and fired it at the actor thinking it was a prop. It wasn't a prop. The actor was hit in the shoulder and seriously wounded, and Brown ran away in a panic. He then took a bad situation and made it worse by passing the gun onto his son and expecting him to take the heat for him. Sure enough, he was arrested and faces additional charges for supplying a minor with a firearm. What no one is quite sure of is where the gun came from. Did it belong to one of the scare actors and get loose, or was it Brown's gun to begin with? In gun-friendly South Carolina, anything is possible. And stupid Halloween pranks aren't a thing of the present day either. There have been ill-advised stunts for over a century. What would make a good Halloween prank? How about a road hazard? This is what some New Jersey pranksters thought in New Milford in 1937. They moved a steamroller out of a storage facility into the middle of the road and waited for traffic to come across it. They got their wish. A bus driver turned the corner and saw the heavy equipment in his way. He immediately swerved to avoid a head-on collision, and the bus found itself pinned across the guardrail overlooking a cliff. Fortunately, the bus had no passengers at the time as the driver was returning it to the garage, but he had to scramble out of the bus very carefully because the bus had broken through the guardrail and was on the verge of tipping over and falling into the chasm below. He escaped with his life, the steamroller was cleared from the street, and there's no report of the pranksters ever being apprehended. 
But the odds of them pulling another Halloween prank after this close call? Forget about it. Unless they were also behind this prank that same year. It was Winona, New Jersey in 1937 the city was hit with an unexpected water shortage. The culprit? A group of high school boys whose Halloween prank involved opening fire hydrants. Normally, this is a nice way to cool off even if the fire departments frown upon it. The problem was these boys didn't stop at one, two, or five fire hydrants. They opened every fire hydrant they could find, letting them pour water out into the streets. And when the town woke up the next morning, their massive water storage tank was empty. Needless to say, these boys were up a creek. Four teenagers were tracked down and taken to jail, and they were anything but repentant. They spent the night in jail where they refused to do their assigned chores and kept everyone awake all night by singing their high school fight song. The water surface to the town was restored after a few hours, and we're betting that the boys ultimately had to face something worse than the law, their parents. This prank nearly took out a whole town's leadership. It was 1913 when a group of community leaders in Oklahoma City were riding in a car. The local bank president, a state Supreme Court judge, a member of the Judicial Commission, and the local attorney were all being driven to a very important destination when they turned the corner and smacked right into a telephone pole that had been laid down in the middle of the road. Most of the car's occupants only suffered minor injuries while the bank president was thrown out of the car and nearly died. A tragic accident and bad luck? While telephone poles can simply fall down and cause chaos, this wasn't the case. Evidence showed that the pole had been deliberately cut and placed in the middle of the road by another prankster who thought that deadly auto accidents make for good, clean Halloween fun. As this was long before the age of security cameras, the prankster was never caught, and the bank president eventually did recover so no lives were lost. In terms of a costly prank, few will top what these boys got up to. In 1927, in New Rochelle, New York, some boys thought it would be fun to start a fire. Most boys have those thoughts, and usually they learn the hard way with either some singed fingers or a blistering lecture from their parents. But these boys would learn a costlier lesson. They set fires near gasoline reservoirs, which took off like, well, wildfire. They soon engulfed the surrounding area, causing massive blasts that blew out the windows of surrounding homes, and it only spread from there. The fire caused massive damage, including destroying a huge six-floor office building used by the oil company. As the blaze spread, the New Rochelle Fire Department was overwhelmed and had to call in other regional departments to help them fight back. Ultimately, the fire was vanquished, but much of the area was destroyed and had to be rebuilt. The boys were too young to be charged or held liable, which is probably a good thing because they would have been paying off the damage into their senior years. But these pranks all had one thing in common. No one got hurt too badly. The same can't be said for these next pranks. This Halloween reveler actually had some good sense. He even put together a charming costume. He was going to a party dressed as a sheep. He used cotton balls to simulate the sheep's bushy wool coat and donned his costume before riding the subway with his friends to the party. Unfortunately, on the subway was one Halloween hooligan who definitely had a different idea for how to celebrate the holiday. He thought it'd be funny to take out his lighter and light one of the cotton balls on fire. And the poor sheep became barbecued mutton. His cotton costume went up like a pile of tinder, with him trapped in it. As he desperately tried to put it out, his friends tried to douse the fire using the alcoholic beverages they planned to drink at the party. This only made the fire worse, and the unfortunate Halloween enthusiast was seriously burned and rushed to the hospital. After the most unlucky Halloween ever, they did have one bit of good luck. His attacker was very wealthy and was able to cover all his hospital bills. But this is nowhere near the worst Halloween prank we've heard of. In 1945, 79-year-old Pauline Elmayan was giving out cookies to trick-or-treaters when she got an unexpected surge of guests. Maybe they heard the cookies were really good, but whatever the reason, she soon ran out. But the kids kept coming. She switched to giving out nickels instead, but soon ran out of those as well and had to start turning people away. The local kids got angry and decided to pull a prank on her. But the prank was completely inappropriate for a 79-year-old woman. The little punk smeared bacon grease on her front porch and proceeded to knock on the door and run away. When Pauline came out of the house, she slipped on the greased porch, took a nasty fall, and broke her hip. At 79, this was a life-changing injury, and the poor woman was severely impaired for the rest of her life. And much like many of these pranks, the exact culprit was never found, because they might have been wearing a mask. These next pranks weren't just ill-advised, and their pranks ended up being fatal. In one of the earliest Halloween pranks gone wrong on record, three young men in Huntington, West Virginia were harassing a hillbilly using an outhouse by throwing things at it. Apparently, he got tired of having his toilet time interrupted because he emerged from the outhouse with a shotgun and fired at them several times at close range. Two of them were killed, while the third was seriously wounded. A horrible tragedy, but one that was likely considered just the price of living in hard country. It wasn't the only time someone retaliated with deadly force. 
In 2014, two groups of teenagers from Arkansas got into a prank war, egging and throwing jars of mayonnaise at each other's cars, and any other cars that got in their way, which is where they got into trouble. While Adrian Broadway, a 15-year-old girl, was engaging in the latest raid, they angered a 48-year-old Willie Noble. The man came out of the car with a shotgun and fired at the car as it was driving away, striking Broadway and killing her. This wasn't 1906 Wild West Virginia, so Noble was arrested and sentenced to 30 years in prison. And sometimes it's not the pranksters who die. Firefighter James McRae took his job seriously, and he was willing to defend anyone's property, including his own. So when he came across a group of teenagers toilet papering his house, his instincts told him they weren't just there for a prank, they were burglars. So he chased them. They ran away as pranksters do, and he made the fatal mistake of pursuing them. The determined firefighter called 911 while trying to take down their license plate number but lost control of his car and hit a fence. He was killed instantly and the pranksters were apprehended, but none of them were charged with crimes related to his death. After all, they'd only been TPing a house, and McRae's tragic death was the result of his overzealous chase. This was another case where, well, can you blame him? There's nothing scarier than a jump scare! Haha, <laughs> did we get you? Imagine how much scarier it would be in person. It was at the heart of a haunted house that one 18-year-old named Pramila Lai took jump scares to the next level. Her family was on vacation, and they hired family friend Narek Galley to house it. So she snuck in, planning to jump out of the closet and freak Galley out, but she got more than she counted on as Galley heard what he assumed to be a burglary, grabbed his shotgun, and fatally shot the girl as she entered the room. Much like the last case, he wasn't charged with a crime. This one has to go under the category of, what were you thinking? A 49-year-old woman saw a clever prank on TV and decided to spike the punch at her party with Visine eye drops. On TV, it apparently made anyone who drank it woozy and vaguely sick, but don't believe what you see on TV. In reality, those eye drops are highly toxic, and one woman who took a sip of the spiked punch became seriously ill. She collapsed and was rushed to the hospital and soon died from respiratory failure. This was a horrible surprise for the culprit, and due to her regret and clean criminal record, the police only charged her with misdemeanor assault. This final story led to everyone saying, Monster down! Is there any more famous American monster than Bigfoot? The mysterious ape man of the Pacific Northwest has been fascinating people for decades, and countless people have thought they saw him wandering the woods as they drove along. But in Montana in 2012, more people saw the monster than usual because the monster was actually 44-year-old Randy Lee Tenley, a local eccentric who put on a military camouflage suit to resemble the monster and wandered the highway. It was a good prank with an unfortunate side effect. Tenley's vision was impaired while wearing it, so while crossing the road he didn't see anything coming toward him. He was run over by two teenage drivers and killed, and local police say they believe he was probably intoxicated during Bigfoot's final highway hike. Want to know some more creepy tales fit for Halloween? Watch terrifying urban legends that turned out to be real, or check out this other video instead.